All right, so this is Dr. Mark Barkey at the University of Alabama, Professor of Aerospace Engineering and Mechanics. We're going to take a look at a uh, Fortran program that I wrote for rainfall cycle counting. This program is in Fortran. There are some things you need to know about Fortran if you're going to use it. Um, I have a uh, short video on basics of Fortran programming. But uh, I don't want to focus on the, the commands in this video. I want to kind of focus on the logic and how it relates to the previous video I made which is on the algorithm development for rainflow cycle counting. So I made this a number of years back. Um, as I sit here today, it's January 2018. And um, this program uses integer, works on an integer file that has been peak picked and rearranged to start and end with the highest peak in the history. It could be stresses or strains or whatever, but it's an integer history and it has already been peak picked and rearranged. So I start out um, identifying some variables. Uh, mem, that's the, as I wrote in the, the previous video, is the number of stored points in your memory at any given time. B flag and C flag are just uh, things that help me to know when I need to read a new B or read a new C point. Peaks is the total number of peaks. Uh, I don't use this one. I can get rid of this in this program. PV is the current number of peaks and volleys. I is just an integer, and pro flag means whether uh, I'm done processing everything or not. I have uh, A, B, and C, those three points that I talked about in the previous video. I have the range from A to B and B to C. I have a loop range. Uh, this one I don't think I use, and then I have my stored memory points, and I have this uh, dimensioned in my program up to 20,000 points, but I do have a check to see if it's greater than 20,000. The absolute worst uh, time history you could have would be one that starts high, and it continues to go uh, bouncing around, and it never goes back up to that point. It keeps uh, decreasing lower and lower, and so I have a check in here that if my total number of peaks and volleys in my time history, the time history I processed recently was at almost 4,000 points, but if that is bigger than this array value, then I say I need to stop and resize arrays because it's possible, although extremely unlikely, that my memory could be as many as the number of points minus one in my time history. So I just have that little check right here. Now, I like to write things out in Excel format files. So I have uh, some files that I've defined here, uh, 66, 67, 68. I have some loop lists and ranges, and i got a debug file. And uh, then I have a, a file here, number 40, which is apeaks.dat, which is the arranged peaks file. So I go and I open my file, and I read my first three points, A, B, and C, and my number of currently read peak and valley points is three. I initialize my memory equal to zero, and I set these two flags equal to zero. And I have a great big do loop for the whole thing. I do this as long as I have points to read out of my file. If PV is greater than the number of peaks, then I'm done, and I need to, to go out of that. And if for some reason I end up with a memory less than zero, I've made a mistake somewhere, so I stop. I've never had this occur in my algorithm, but if for some reason there was a mistake, then that's just a check for that. All right Now, um, at the very end, if my PV is equal to my peaks and the memory is zero, then I'm done processing and I go to the end of my algorithm and we'll look at that in a little bit. All right, so now I have my points A, B, and C. I compute the ranges, the absolute value B minus A, absolute value C minus B. And then I have my case 1 if the range BC is exactly equal to the range AB. And I have identified a loop, and I print them out. And I have this, this case if memory is equal to 0, 1, or 2. Uh, if memory is equal to 0, if memory is equal to 1, or if memory is greater than or equal to 2, we do slightly different things. If memory is equal to 0, then I make my new point A equal my old point C, and I read in a new B and C. If memory is equal to 1, then I make my point A my first memory point, this would be mem1, um, B is equal to C, and I deduct one from my stored memory, and I read a new C. I do not read a new B. 
memory is greater than or equal to 2, then I go back two points, just like we did in the example that I showed in that video. A is equal to S mem minus 1, B is equal to S mem, C is equal to C, and I deduct 2 from my memory pool, and I do not read any new points B or C. So these are, these are the cases all inside case 1 like the subcases. And then I have a, a check here. If it did anything else for whatever reason, I don't think that's possible. But go ahead and stop the program and you got an error. There. Now I check for case two. Uh, if range BC is greater than range AB, then I know I have a loop of range AB and I print that out. Then I have the same steps. If memory is equal to zero, one, or greater than or equal to two, just the exact same things that I had in the previous case. And then I have this check. If there's anything else, it stops the program. Finally, then I get into case 3. Now, case 3 is the one where we did not have a high enough value to close a loop. So in this case, I'm going to add 1 to my memory. So mem is equal to mem plus 1. I store point A into that memory spot. It's the latest one. If memory was 0, now it's stored in position 1. If memory was 12, uh, now it's stored in position 13, because it's the next memory point. A becomes B, and B becomes C. Here's some debug stuff I have here. And uh, I do not read a new B, but I do read a new C. And then, uh, so this is the main end of the main branch. And then here, if um, B is equal to 1, then I read in point B. B flag is equal to 1, and then I read a new point B. I count up, the, I add another point to my points that I've processed. I reset the B flag. If C flag is equal to 1, then I read a new point C. I add another point to the number of points that I have read out of my file, so that I check to see if I've read them all. My C flag goes back to 0. And then here's the end of my dilute. So that little bit, uh, I know this is kind of blown up, and it's a little bit bloated because I have some of these cases that I could have collapsed to be a little bit faster. But you know, within what are we at? Um, line 94 down to line 287. So we have a couple hundred lines, and most of them are blank. Uh, that I that we have um, to do all of this rain flow cycle counting. It's very efficient. It's three point algorithm is very efficient. So if I have read all my points, the very last point will always be a case uh, one. And in that particular case, I have a range of A B, and I print that out, and I'm done. So again, that's a very quick look at my Fortran code. Um, and uh, you know, the point of this is not for you to copy this down, but to try to go back and understand how to develop your own algorithm. And uh, in fatigue analysis, I usually kind of stop it at this point, and we do our fatigue calculation. In plasticity, in that plasticity class, I always like to ask the students to see if they can develop a, an algorithm that will take this data and plot hysteresis loops for this data, uh, which can be a little bit more challenging. All right, but we have all the information there that we need now, and uh, so that will be the end of this video.